Many of the goods we use every day are transported by container. These goods travel safely in their containers by road, rail, inland waterways and the high seas. This journey necessitates a synchronous flow of information in the supply chain, in the private sector and to the authorities. This clip shows the relationship between the physical transport and the information flow for a standard scenario. First, we will introduce the parties that are involved. Agents are often specialized organizations, also called freight forwarders, who arrange the transport of the goods on behalf of the buyer or the sender. The harbor authorities in the exporting country and the importing country control the flow of vessels and goods in the harbor. The customs office is present in a harbor to control the financial export and import of goods. The deep sea carrier transports the container over sea on a vessel. If the deep sea carrier arranges the transport on behalf of the sender, he is called a carrier hauler. If the deep sea carrier is contracted by the buyer, he is called a merchant hauler. The local EU agent arranges the import of the goods. The dispatcher coordinates the movements of containers on a sea terminal. The barge operator supplies inland shipping capacity from the harbor to an inland destination. The life of a container starts when an empty container is picked up by a truck. A carrier hauler, merchant hauler or dispatcher picks up goods at a factory in the east, outside the EU, and brings them to a terminal in the seaport. A local agent sends information about the cargo to the local harbor and local customs. 24 hours before departure, the agent sends a message to customs at the first port of call within the EU. 24 hours before departure, all digital information about the cargo has been received by the local harbor. The ship sets sail. Meanwhile, the information about the ship's cargo is sent to the agent at the harbor in the EU. The agent produces several reports about the ship. For customs, there is the cargo manifest. For the port authorities, the ship's arrival time, its security ISPS, and details of waste or hazardous materials on board. Other information, such as the crew's effects declaration, passenger list, types of frozen meat or vegetation being carried, and so on, are sent to the relevant bodies, such as the harbour police or veterinary services. In the meantime, the dispatcher and the barge operator arrange that the container will continue the trip on an inland vessel. This is merchant haulage. Meanwhile, the ship is still sailing and continues its voyage. Customs decides which shipments to inspect based on the manifest of the goods transported. The ship approaches the EU harbour and the captain sends a short summary report to the harbour to declare its arrival. Customs combines the manifest and the actual arrival time into a summary declaration. The sea terminal unloads the ship and the containers to be inspected are set aside in a designated area or are transported to the scanning facilities. Once unloading is complete, the terminal sends a discharge report to customs. Customs inspects the containers. The sea terminal keeps the container in storage for a maximum of 45 days. A transport declaration is filed, meaning the container is cleared to continue its journey. The barge operator sends a transport command to the barge captain or skipper. The sea terminal needs three signals to begin loading the barge. These are permission from customs, a collection instruction from the barge operator, and permission from the sea carrier to release the containers. Once the barge is loaded, the terminal sends confirmation back to the sea carrier. The skipper or barge captain reports to the waterway manager and the Dutch Central Bureau of Statistics, the CBS, that he is starting the inland voyage. The digital information travels alongside the barge, passing from one waterway manager to the next. The barge operator sends an unload instruction to the barge's destination, the inland terminal. The terminal prepares for the barge's arrival. The barge arrives at the terminal and can be unloaded. A truck will pick up the container and transport it by road. 
the truck delivers the pallets from the container to a distribution center. A message is sent to customs to clear the transport documentation. The administrative provisions for entry into the distribution center are thus fulfilled. Once the container is empty, the truck takes it to an inland terminal. With other empty containers, it is loaded onto a barge and returned to the seaport. At the port, the empty container is placed in a depot to await its next journey. Of course, there are many variations on this scenario in real life. This clip aims to show you which actors are involved and what their role is in the process.